They are hot, dry and dangerous. They come from the desert and sweep over the mountain passes down to the Californian coast. They were named by settlers after the Santa Ana Mountains southeast of Los Angeles. The Santa Ana winds often leave chaos and destruction in their wake, hence their other name, the Devil Winds. southern California coast, where the hot Santa Ana winds blow, late autumn and winter are their high season. Living in California is many an American's dream. Blue skies, a mild climate, winter on the beach, it's a paradise for sun worshippers and sports enthusiasts. And it's a gift of the Santa Ana winds. They blow away the cold coastal fog, sweep the smog from the cities and provide surfers with the waves they crave. But happiness and horror go hand in hand. The desert winds also have their dark and dangerous side. James Lashley is an actor. He moved to California from Missouri 30 years ago because Hollywood offered him work. Star Trek was a milestone in his career. The dark side of the Santa Ana winds their unsettling psychological effect became an issue for him while filming with Michelle Pfeiffer. So I was lucky enough to be in the film called White Oleander, which was made from the book by Janet Fitch. Um, and there's a passage in there that speaks directly to the Santa Anas, and I'd like to read that to you. Yeah. Okay. The Santa Anas blew in hot from the desert shriveled the last of the spring grass into whiskers of pale straw. Only the oleanders thrived, their delicate poisonous blooms, their dagger green leaves. We could not sleep in the hot dry nights, my mother and I. I woke up at midnight to find her bed empty. I climbed to the roof and easily spotted her blonde hair like a white flame in the light of the three-quarter moon. Oleander time, she said. Lovers who kill each other now will blame it on the wind. She held up her large hand and spread the fingers, let the desert dryness lick through. My mother was not herself in the time of the Santa Anas. I have never really gotten used to the Santa Anas in the 30 years that I've lived here. Um, it's always a surprise when they come, and uh, particularly when they come in the dry season, it always brings the fear of fire because that's present and you feel it in the wind. There's a heat to the wind and there's a dryness to the wind and it makes everything brittle. And particularly in a time of drought, like we're in now, everything feels very sharp and ready to explode. The 
the Santa Anas almost always mean a risk of fire. The hot desert winds dry up scrub and undergrowth. Their breath then fans small spontaneous fires to life and turns them into uncontrollable infernos. Wildfires rage here every year. They're as much a part of Southern California as the winds that drive them. Despite their heroic efforts, firefighters are fairly powerless against the force of the winds. Narrow mountain roads often make it hard to get equipment to the area of fire. Helicopters are needed to fly bombing missions day and night. Jim Dalton is one of the oldest and most experienced pilots with the Ventura County Search and Rescue Service. And not just a pilot, he's also a mechanic. He spends every free minute working on his helicopter, making sure it's always in tip-top condition. This is his baby. We've been working on this about four years as our budget allows us to obtain parts and stuff like that. Uh, it would be nice if we were able to go out and buy all new aircraft, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> Not in the real world, anyway. I started in the Army and uh, you know, during Vietnam. I went over there. I actually went in the Army to become a helicopter pilot and uh, took three days worth of tests. They said, well, you can do anything you want to do. I said, I'd like to fly. I can go longer than I can. For the Santa Anas, to me, it usually means extra work, overtime shifts, uh, because everybody is on a heightened state of alert. Um, it makes flying a little more difficult, a little more challenging. Can't get my hand wrapped around. Flight operations for the Ventura County Fire Service are directed by Sergeant Carl Patterson. So on this side is the, the, of the tank, you can see where the two ports fill. So this, this fill here is to fill with a, a hose, a fire hose either off of a fire truck or off of a water truck. And then this is the snorkel that's attached to the back of the aircraft. Uh, once we get to a body of water, um, we just don't use salt water, so anything other than salt water, so ponds, streams, swimming pools, anything like that. We can drop the snorkel down, it's 10 feet long, put it in the water, and then it has a pump on the end of the snorkel to suck the water up into the tank. So you can fill the helicopter while you're hovering over a body of water. In the impassable terrain, large-scale air attacks bombarding the fire with water or spectacular red fire retardant are often the only feasible option. You're always cautious, I wouldn't say frightened, but very cautious, uh, just because of the, uh, um, the turbulence and stuff like that. You never know exactly what it's going to do because you can't see it. On their way to the ocean, the Santa Anas blow over the wide Tehachapi Pass, which funnels and accelerates the streaming air. Back in the 1980s, this was the site chosen for California's first and biggest wind park. Wind is the resource that brought growth and prosperity here.
Mike Messier is one of wind power's pioneers. He grew up here, starting out as a turbine technician. Now he gives the next generation the benefit of his experience. Uh, there's been a lot of change in Tatchby in the last 40 years. Uh, when I was a young boy, it was a uh, very small town, uh, maybe uh, 4,000 people in the entire community. And uh, it's uh, probably around 40,000 people now. Uh, a lot of industry has, uh, has moved into the area. A big part of that is the, uh, the wind industry. Living in, in Tehachapi, uh, wind has always been a part of my life. Uh, it's windy here almost every day, uh, no matter where you're at. Colton, you got a copy? Yeah, go ahead. I have my son that works on the same uh, wind turbine, so now I've passed those babies from, from my care to his care, and uh, it's, it's very fulfilling for me to see uh, uh, not only myself make a career, but also second generation. Today they have to climb. There's a meteorological problem at the top of the 100 meter tower. Mike's son Colton, like his father, went straight from school to become a turbine technician at the wind park. For both of them, what they do is far more than a job. All right, give me a screwdriver. Yep. They refer to the turbines affectionately as their babies. 120, 120 volts. Yep. wind blows and the view below is dizzy. A safety harness is a must up here. The turbines are deactivated during maintenance, of course, but there is no way to stop the wind. Working on a day like this, uh, the winds are fairly high. If you're up on one of these towers, um, you have to have a lot of heavy equipment on, and so it's hard to communicate with other technicians that you're working with, so you almost feel uh, isolated and the only thing talking to you all day is the wind. It's in your ears and you're working with it all day long and uh, so it almost does take on a personality. Uh, when the wind is extremely strong it's angry. Uh, when the wind is low it's like a it's like a, a, a good friend and a, and, and a comfort. So it it can be some days uh, you, you love the wind, some days you wish it would go away. When the Santa Ana's develop uh, the wind primarily comes off the desert and uh, gets very focused and very uh, uh, high speed wind uh, in the canyons. When they begin blowing, as I do, I do get worried uh, because of the, uh, uh, the conditions which are very warm and very dry and uh, is usually when fires start uh, in our mountains and in our communities in, in California. Sunrise in the Mojave Desert. It's part of the Great American Basin, which is the third biggest desert system of the planet. This is the cradle of the Santa Ana winds. In summer, temperatures reach 50 degrees Celsius. It virtually never rains, a deserted region shaped by water and wind. When a high pressure system forms here and a low pressure system over the ocean, a suction effect is created. The dry desert air flows west over the mountain ranges to the coast and sweeps over Southern California as the Santa Anas. Birgitta Jansen, a former trauma psychologist, spends half the year here living and working in the Mojave Desert, more precisely in Death Valley. 
She scours the rough backlands for remains of human presence to record them before they disappear. Being in a place that is this extreme and this difficult, this harsh to live for animals, for plants, people, it challenges one to pay attention. Your life can depend on paying attention. The heat in the valley basins gives rise to fierce winds. To avoid being caught unawares by a deadly sandstorm, it's vital to keep a close eye on the weather. Birgitta has learned to pay attention to the sounds the wind makes, and she knows what they mean. Wind in mesquite trees, they make a kind of a whooshing sound. You know, mesquite trees have these very lacy kind of leaves, and the wind just kind of whoosh gently. And I can tell how strong the wind is by how the mesquite tree whooshes. And then I've heard wind here in the valley, coming up the valley, and it sounds like a freight train. Like this, this noise, you think, my goodness, that's, that's one big truck coming up the valley, you know, and then you realize it's, whoops, it's the wind, you know, I better, better take down my tent because my tent is gonna be way down the alluvial fan if I don't, <laughs> don't take care of it. Far from any asphalt roads, this is the back country. There's no mobile reception, no radio reception. Birgitta Jansen is looking for a cemetery, somewhere in nowhere. In the back country, when you run into a problem, you've got, even if it's a minor problem, you've got a major problem because help can be hours away. Um, if I run into a problem late in the day, nobody will be, out, be able to come out and rescue me until at least the next day, if that. And that is if anybody knows where I am. Daylight is fading when she discovers the cemetery, the end of the line for adventurers who came into the desert to prospect for gold or other precious metals. There was a brief boom here in the early 20th century. All that marks the site are a few crumbling lengths of wood. There's nothing to indicate who's buried here. In a few years, this may all be covered in sand. The enormous space in the desert, um, it, it puts things in perspective. I know that I am not more than a drop in the ocean. It's proven to work. Keep going, stop. Back in Tia Chapi, future turbine technicians limber up. Wind power is booming and promises good and secure jobs. All right, relax. Now bring your, you're gonna grab with your right hand, you're gonna grab your left elbow. Pioneer Mike Messier generally leaves the climbing to the younger generation nowadays, but he shares his expertise. He's the founder of Airstreams Renewables, a school that trains turbine technicians. Yeah, Glenn? Yeah. Hey, um, you know, I'm looking at uh, some of the placement uh, figures with admissions. Very good. Okay. We'll see you shortly. Thank you. You will require to have... Nearly all of the instructors have themselves spent years clambering about on turbines. Safety and discipline are cornerstones of the entire education program. When it's actually working. So let's see if you can correct that and you'll be able to see if we, the difference on the u flow meter. A course like this costs $12,000. It runs for six weeks 
and teaches students the basics of carrying out maintenance work in the field, outdoors in a wind park. This hood, you guys got a buddy check yourself too, right? So work together. Look. To qualify for training, students need to be in good physical condition, enjoy being outdoors, and have a good hat for heights. The students come from all over the United States. Most are ex-army, which guarantees endurance and responsibility. After graduating, they'll be in demand nationwide. Their job prospects are excellent. Colton Messier reckons 40 is the cut-off age for climbing. But there are enough other career opportunities in the wind industry after that. His father is living proof of that and a role model. I love every bit of it. Just knowing that that was his industry and he started there. And uh, now I'm following in his footsteps on the same turbines nonetheless. It's, uh, it's, I, I take a lot of pride in it and it's, uh, I wouldn't want to do anything else. The main attraction that I got out there is just being outside and you're working with a tight group of people and you spend more time with them than you do with your own family you know, for 8 to 12 hours a day and you get pretty close with them. So safety totally depends on the people that you're with and it's, I mean, our, our motto up there is be your brother's keeper. You're always watching out for the guy next to you. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Santa Ana, it's a love-hate relationship, really. I mean, you, you love it because it's you're making those turbines run with the wind, and if those turbines are running, you're making money. But if it gets to be too high of winds, then things can go wrong. Just worrying about, about my turbines, those are, those are my babies, and I want to make sure they're going to be good. If you stand on top of a mountain uh, and the wind is high enough, you're able to run and jump and open your jacket like a wing and the wind will catch you and lift you up and bring you over. Uh, or you can stand on the mountain and lean down and lean and the wind will hold you up. So it's like a, a magical hand that's uh, either lifting you off your feet and over or holding you up. As they blow through the mountain passes towards the Pacific, the Santa Ana winds become fiercer and faster. And when they stream down from the mountains, they also get hotter. Hot, dry, fast, they become a hazard. For millions of years, winds have turned small spontaneous fires into massive conflagrations. It's perfectly natural, one of nature's ways of making a clean sweep. The dry scrub burns, making way for new growth, and the ash provides the soil with nutrients. Major fires only become a problem when human settlements spread to mountains and wilderness. The population of California has trebled since 1950, 
and more than 61% of all homes have been built in high fire risk areas. Anyone settling in what's known as the Santa Ana Corridor near Los Angeles basically accepts the risk of disaster. Actor James Lashley knows the most sought after but dangerous hillside locations. So I'm going to take you up into the hills where people like to go to get up high so they have a nice view of the ocean, but they're also backed up against wild land. So the danger of fire is substantially increased. But this is the desirable place to be. So the problem is, when the Santa Anas are blowing, if the fire comes over the hill, it blows down the hillside, and there's nothing to stop it until it gets to the sea. And it runs down the hill right into the houses which are built right up against the wilderness area. In 1990, in Santa Barbara, somebody started a fire at the Painted Cave, and it moved five miles in two hours burnt 450 houses of 5,000 acres, and there was nothing to stop it except for the ocean, except the wind stopped, and the firefighters were able to beat it. These scenes are repeated year after year, the Santa Anas drive voracious flames over the slopes of Southern California, reducing woodland to cinders, destroying hundreds of homes and forcing hundreds of thousands of people to seek refuge. The scale of the damage depends entirely on the whim of the winds. What drives people to accept the constant risk of fire? Living with the Santa Ana winds means having to be prepared for disaster at all times. Is the car ready to go? Are valuables and essentials at hand? Documents, water, flashlight. Where are the children? Is their father reachable? Even those who can afford the high insurance premiums and rebuild their homes lose irreplaceable personal memories. Here, particularly in these years, it's really, really dry. So everything is just ready to burn at a at an instant, it just explodes into flames. And then when the winds are blowing, it's, uh, there's nothing to stop it. It goes from the tops of trees. It doesn't burn along the ground. It goes so fast. Typically, the Santa Ana winds blow out of the east to the west, um, and anything that's any fire that's wind-driven is much more difficult to stop than any fire that doesn't have wind behind it. It's just using its natural resources. So I don't know that there's a way to actually control what the Santa Ana winds do that, that mitigate or make the fire any better or worse. Today, there's a red flag warning, the highest state of alert. The Venturi County Rescue Helicopters are waiting to go into action. Red flag day, well, it means uh, initially there's a good danger of fires because of the winds. So our initial attack, if you will, with the helicopters, there'll be two helicopters dispatched initially. Um, one ship will carry a hand crew that's uh, a, a nine-man hand crew with all their tools, and then the other ship will go uh, directly for water. Uh, unfortunately, we can't carry people and water at the same time. It's too heavy a load because uh, just water alone is about 3,000 pounds. Till, till Wednesday, but possibly Thursday, Friday. 
Firefighters, pilots and medics are now on high alert. The volunteers of the search and rescue service will also be mobilized in an emergency. Everyone hopes that none of the dreaded bushfires will break out. If they're not brought under control immediately, a major wildfire will develop. And fighting that is a real challenge. No, I'm still on second. Uh, I'm second up with uh, Dunball. It is dangerous during red flag times because the wind's blowing. Normally, uh, a normal wind condition, 10 to 20 knots of wind, our uh, altitudes that we drop at is 50 feet above the fire. 50 feet, 50 knots. However, when you have high winds like this, you have to get lower because the wind is blowing your water away and uh, it will evaporate it before it even hits the fire. So a lot of times we're a little lower and a little slower. Red flag warnings are also for the civilian population. The fire service has compiled a whole list of precautionary measures to keep the lightweight wooden houses from catching fire so quickly. So it's red flag warning today. So I'm taking in everything that can blow away, even though the winds haven't started. Um, they want us to take in everything that's flammable. So I'm taking it all inside. Maybe is a little overcautious, but I'd rather do that than burn up. So. The wind makes you feel on edge. That's for sure. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame the wind. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a good excuse. It's a, it's a great writer's crutch. Um, Joan Didion uh, has, uh, uh, mentions this Santa Ana's beautifully in a, in a uh, piece called uh, Los Angeles Notebook from Slouching Towards Bethlehem. There is something uneasy in the Los Angeles air this afternoon, some unnatural stillness, some tension. What it means is that tonight, a Santa Ana will begin to blow. I have neither heard nor read that a Santa Ana is due, but I know it. And almost everyone I have seen today knows it too. We know it because we feel it. The baby frets, the maid sulks. I rekindle a waning argument with the telephone company, then cut my losses and lie down, given over to whatever it is in the air. To live with the Santa Ana is to accept, consciously or unconsciously, a deeply mechanistic view of human behavior. A hot motorbike exhaust, a power line down because the pole has collapsed, a casually discarded cigarette, a spark from welding gear, a moment's carelessness can have devastating consequences. If the Santa Anas are blowing, they act like bellows. To deprive the raging fire of fuel and stop it spreading, fire breaks are cut in dry grassland and wizened scrub is cleared. Alternatively, backburning is done to create a black line of scorched earth. closer you are to wild land or wild fire or brush is going to be a greater a greater danger to your immediate impact on your on your property so as one of the requirements 
by the fire department is to have a brush clearance that's 100, I believe it's still 100 feet around the edge of your property, depending on where you live. Despite the constant fire risk, fire service funding is limited. Maintaining an aging fleet, the youngest chopper dates from 1975, is as much part of the service as carrying out rescue operations. When the Santa Anas whip through the canyons again, both men and machines need to be fit and ready for immediate deployment. I know when I was actually working the streets as a policeman that it seems like during Santa Ana wind conditions uh, that people were a little more easier irritated because of the winds and stuff like that or they didn't feel good or they get nosebleeds. It just, it just depends upon the individual person. You know, you can feel your sinuses drying up, your lips chapping because of the winds, but uh, nothing other than that. I don't like them because it makes everything dry and no humidity and it's everything becomes staticky and much more difficult to do and generally people have a uh, more less tolerance for that because it is windy out and it is it disrupts people's lives to some extent. But even if the wind is a pain in the neck and even if there's a constant threat to fire the Californian dream still evidently retains its magnetic attraction. Willy Dido is from Vermont, but he now lives in Santa Barbara, which is a mecca for hang gliders. Thanks to California's mild winter, he can fly here nearly every day of the year. He makes a living teaching others. It's a great spot here, um, especially in the winter time here in, in Santa Barbara because we have a good um, great thermals this time of year. It's probably the best place to fly in California uh, this time of year. Um, we have good, good thermal lift, which allows us to climb higher uh, than where we take off. So we can go around and soar around and circle around for hours. Santa Ana is around here. Um, sometimes will allow us not to fly. Um, we're unable to fly with uh, the strong winds. Um, so, so sometimes with the area here, we get blocked by those particular winds. Um, sometimes maybe you know, 20 miles away, it can be very windy. Otherwise over here, it can be very calm and we can still be flying. So it's a very kind of a special area for that. I mean, sometimes it's kind of nice at night. You get the strong winds. It's, it's, it's kind of nice at nighttime, but during the daytime, we don't really like them for flying here. Um, because they, they kind of, uh, it's too strong wind. Uh, we don't really like it. Uh, not very safe to fly. <laughs> so we tend to, to go on different days. But without the Santa Anas, there'd be no cloudless blue skies, nor would there be the long sunny winter months that permit outdoor sports virtually every day of the year.
As long as he can earn a living from flying, Willie Dido has no intention of moving away from expensive Santa Barbara. When the Santa Ana winds keep the clouds at bay, raise the surf and turn winter into summer, their treacherous and menacing side is forgotten. A warm breeze on bare skin, outdoor lifestyle, balmy evenings, they're all a gift of the Santa Annas. Birds and fish also prepare for a feast when the Santa Anas blow. Cold water wells up from the deep, bringing plankton and other food with it. In good times and in bad, the Santa Anas shape Californian life. It's almost schizophrenic. There's the unbearable lightness of being, but in the background lurk insecurity, menace and risk. L.A. private eye Philip Marlowe, a man all too familiar with the feelings of the human spirit, has the last word. There was a desert wind blowing that night. It was one of those hot, dry Santa Anas that come down through the mountain passes, make your hair curl, make your nerves jump and your skin itch. On nights like that, every booze party ends in a fight. Meet little wives, feel the edge of the carving knife and study their husbands' necks. Anything can happen. 